and with Dr. Allison as well. Uh, so the topic will be creating landscape scale change through resilient pasture systems. So Steph Cowley has worked as an agronomist specialising in pastures in southwest Victoria and as a property overseer in the Holbrook area. Uh, a key component of this latter role included optimising pasture production through rotational grazing and managing seasonal feed deficits. So Alison and Steph are going to be talking about um, a pastures project run by Holbrook Landcare Network and other farming systems groups. Thanks everyone. Um, I'm up here again because Steph has only just been with us a couple of months and I thought it was really unfair to land a talk like this on her on her own. So we'll let her do the fun bits and I'll do the, the, little, the context at the start and the finish. Um, so Holbrook Landcare Network is part of the Farming Systems Group Alliance and the Farming Systems Group Alliance is uh, about mm, 11 farming systems groups spread across southern and central New South Wales. So in this area we've, you've got IREC, you know, IREC down here and then you've also got um, a few others, southern farming well, Central West Farming Systems, I don't know whether they come this far south, but anyway, there's, there's, there's a number of them and we're all participating together in the Southern New South Wales Drought Resilience Adoption and Innovation Hub. The purpose of the hub is to bring together groups from uh, different organisations from across the region to work on uh, drought resilience and it's based off funding from the Future Drought Fund. Um, and the idea is to rather than having groups working in silos is actually to get people to come together and work collectively on an issue. So kind of makes sense when you think about it. Um, we, the, the Future Drought Fund for the last number of years have held various grant rounds to work, to, to put funds into the development of projects for drought resilience. And in the Southern New South Wales Drought Hub, and particularly for Holbrook Landcare Network being um, highly grazing dominant, um, feed base is priority when it comes to drought management. Uh, and I'm sure if anyone's running livestock in these regions, it's, it's a pretty high priority here too. So we, this was the first project, a collaborative project of this nature, through, funded through the Future Drought Fund and led by the Southern New South Wales Drought Hub with us as the main organisation pushing it along to actually work on feed base issues in, in, uh, in the context of drought resilience. So we built this project and it's been a little bit of a, um, a uh, test case, if you like, it's the first one the hub has done. Uh, but we actually um, have had some really great uh, results so far. Um, in the Holbrook area, you know, so, so these are the, the, the farming systems groups supporting this project at the moment. You have FarmLink, Central West Farming Systems, Riv Plains, Monero Farming Systems and us. And we're also working with local land services, Department of Primary Industries, Charles Sturt University. Um, uh, so that's the team that we've got. And as I said, you know, what we've noticed over the years, I've got a background in pastures research and particularly what I've noticed over the years is that the area of pasture uh, research and extension has really not um, been well resourced. And so one of my key drivers and one of the, the hub's key drivers was to get some work in this area. So what we, and what we're noticing too is that across the state um, there's there's been a tendency towards annual systems again. You know, our perennial pastures are getting degraded. We're not putting in as much perennial pasture as we used to. And, you know, we do need that in our systems uh, to manage drought. So obviously persistence through drought is, is critical. Um, so the way we designed this was from the bottom up. 
effectively. What, we, what each farming systems group did was we tasked them with the job of building demonstration sites, both a, a one focused on species, so looking at what species will perform well in what regions, and also one based on practice. So if you've got a perennial pasture in your area, how do you look after it? And to do that effectively, we needed to make sure we had good regional context. So for each of these farming systems groups, we ensured that there was a producer reference group supporting these projects, giving them the information that they needed. Uh, so the five producer reference groups, one for each farming systems group was established, and the types of information they were bringing were, you know, how to what, you know, having input into the design of the sites, the location, where we put them, what species and varieties we'd look at, um, what sort of grazing management we apply, and other farming practices, fertiliser strategies, etc. What are the local challenges? What is actually important in that region? So they were providing that local context. Overseeing the whole project, we had each of the groups represented and we formed a bit of a steering committee to make sure it all worked together and made sense. But then we also had Department of Primary Industries coming in with technical support and local land services also supporting with um, extension material and helping with one-on-one -on -one engagement in, um, on the ground. And we've also preparing a whole bunch of events, workshops, etc. One of the other things that was required of the project was that we upscale it. So there's only so much you can learn from a demo what is the impact of that longer term? What is the impact of that across the region? So, you know, expanding those results, we brought CSU in to help us with a bit of modelling of what we could of the demo sites in each region. So we could actually look at the impact in it a little bit more seriously. I'm going to hand to Steph to talk about the demo sites, because that's the fun bit. All right, the fun stuff. So... Across this project, we've got 11 established demo sites. Um, a couple of them are a bit behind and catching up, so we'll get established this season. Uh, and they're all across the mid to high rainfall area of New South Wales. Um, so Condo, not too far, and then south up, whichever way you want to go, um, to Nimitabel and Bombala, um, then down onto the river at Baruga and Savanac. Um, our, so across all the groups, the, they've been tasked to create a species site and a demo site. So the species sites are just looking to focus on um, varieties and species selection um, relative to all their areas. So for Holbrook, we put ours at Mango um, and we're just looking to have see what mixes work well um, and also now directing that towards new, uh, nitrogen management. Farmlink have, they've just kind of gone all these listed there, they seem to grow in this area so we'll just put them in and see what happens. Um, Riv Plains are looking at the effects of loosen and subclover. Um, and combining those two and having a look at the seeding rates um, and, yeah, having a look at how, what the persistence is and the feed quality. Um, Central West, kind of similar to Farmlink at Tamora. They've just thrown all those ones in, seeing how they perform, seeing how they persist. Uh, the Monero, they actually have two, um, so their first one which is on the left, again, quite similar to um, Farmlink and Central West. Um, given the climate and the growing seasons they have um, in their area, they're just having a look at what, um, what will persist, what will establish, what will persist. Um, and they've thrown a couple of interesting ones in there, like digit grasses on there, for example. Their second one is then looking at um, different dormancy rating, ratings of Lucen um, and similar again, just seeing how they persist, um, feed quality, pasture persistence, those sorts of things. So onto the demo sites, these sites are all looking at how to manage um, your pastures and the different ones they've selected. So for ours, it's located um, on the highway at Bookham, 
and it's looking at nutrient management on native pastures. The site is in two sites, um, one site, site one. Alternative fertiliser demonstration and focusing on um, the ratio of phosphorus and sulphur. And site two, which this is one of the sites that's still yet to be established, um, is a nutrient subtractive site. And that's just looking at pulling out a nutrient completely um, and what effect is that going to have on persistence establishment management. Central West, their site for their demo is looking at those listed, those four listed mixes, um, how they establish, how they persist, um, and also they've decided to put sheep on and have a look at live weight gains um, for that side of management. Riverine Plains are looking at loosen, rotating loosen, um, rotational versus set stocking management. Um, and similar to Central West, having a look at um, live weight gains in sheep and how that's affected. Um, the Monero, so the third one, is looking at the effect of soil moisture between well, how Phalaris and Lucent affect soil moisture um, on their sites. So from all of those sites, they're, as Alison pretty well mentioned, um, we're upscaling with CSU to have a look at the modding, modelling from previous trends and what we predict will be future trends. Um, and we're also working alongside Farming Forecaster um, to work with farmers and across those focus regions um, with weather stations and soil moisture probes um, to kind of tidy up that overall message. And then from the sites and the upscale, oh sorry, um, the communications from this project that we're going to be delivering, um, there's going to be various workshops, field days, um, up until autumn, so keep an eye out for those. Um, we're going to be working with LLS to get them on farm one-on-one -on -one, um, with people wanting to adopt this type of management. Um, it is incentivised with soil tests. Um, and we will also be producing case studies that with topics that are relevant um, from the demo sites, species sites across all the areas, um, and a few technical pieces as well. So from all of that, the example extension messages are across the screen, but that's, these, this is the messaging that we're hoping this project will deliver to everyone um, that's interested. So um, nitrogen management, rotational grazing, um, growth patterns, pasture compositions. Um, yeah, there's, there's all sorts which is going to come out of this project. So, yeah. So, Thanks, Steph, that was great. So, yeah, you can see that every group, every region, every farming systems group region has really taken this and done their own thing with it, which is great, because what that means is it's what the producers in those areas, the types of questions they're asking is going to be relevant to them. And as Steph said, we're going to have some, um, some technical pieces that are going to go with that so that, you, you know, you're learning a few things on that. Um, the biggest joy of dealing with grant rounds is that they're too, always too short, always, always too short. Uh, and w the frustrating thing with when it comes to pastures research is it's a long-term job. And so these sites are just starting to kick goals. And the really wonderful thing that we've done with this project is we've now got focal points across the region where we can come together and talk pastures and look at ways of doing things better. So what we are hoping is that, um, despite all the contracting delays and everything, we're, we're really getting going now, um, but um, these sites are starting to evolve. So we've got, um, we're working with the Southern New South Wales Drought Hub to ensure that these sites are continued post the project 
and they're already starting to evolve into in, in preparation for new sites. So the Mangapla site at, at book at um, for us is actually evolving to start looking at nitrogen management within those pastures. Um, the Bookham site for us will, is a really exciting one actually. We're looking at, um, within that nutrient management work, we're actually working with CSIRO on that now and we're actually getting additional sites put with it and we're also looking at things that are emerging issues. You might have heard Jason say earlier that, the, um, that sulphur is an issue that um, has kind of been sleeping, that we haven't done enough work on that. So we've actually got a couple of sulphur treatments in this and we can actually look at the role of sulphur and really understand for that environment how we can do sulphur better or what the impact is. So these sites are evolving. We now have assets in the area and it's likely that if we can make use of these, we can even put them in other areas. So if Locals, if you if you want pasture sites, perhaps there's an opportunity to talk to your local land service guys here, and we can see if we can get another site put here. Um, so we really are building a foundation for future work. Um, hopefully, it means that we've got places when we come on trips like this that we can visit in the future, uh, and we've proven that there's we can get this model of collaboration across organisations working well, which is going to cause efficiencies. Um, in organisations and also better outcomes for, for you guys when it comes to messages coming out. So the project concludes this, this year, unfortunately in June, but the results will continue, which is a wonderful thing. Finally, just thank you to the, for, to the Southern New South Wales Drought Hub for supporting this type of work. I think it's really important that, you know, this model of ground up, um, you know, design is, is shown to work and that we get the farming systems groups involved with, with leading it. So thanks to the hub and also to the Future Drought Fund for funding it. Thank you. Thank you. Very good, thanks, Steph and Alison. Um, moving on.